Lake Powell, one of my favorite places in the world to visit and fish. Uh, it's the second largest by capacity reservoir in the United States. It's actually got more shoreline miles than the entire Pacific coast of the United States. Um, not right now because there's a drought, but you know, most people go down there to for the water sports, um, the skiing, wakeboarding, um, explore canyons. It's a beautiful place to visit. Um, but for me, the best thing about Lake Powell is the striper boils. Um, and you can fish for them multiple ways. Um, this is with my niece here. Uh, I don't know how many fish she caught, but a lot. <laughs> we got into some really great boils, and so that's why I'm gonna go over. All right, so my setup for this trip, I had my payload with my uh, Portland Big Shot. Then I used a couple different flies depending on the situation. I was kind of fishing for smallies and then uh, some carp, and then I would switch out and chase some of these striper boils. Uh, so here's some examples of some of those boils and it literally looks like the water's boiling and what's happening is the shad are being grouped up by these stripers um, and then the stripers feed on them and kind of follow them around on the surface. Uh, the shad can spook fairly easily um, so you got to kind of be careful when approaching them um, but I mean it's it's one of those bucket list things that I hope everybody gets out and, and does. So um, you know basically uh, I'll go over kind of how I approach things at Lake Powell. Um, I mean, it's it's a lot of the same thing over and over with the footage, but it's pretty cool footage. Um, you know, you, you try to spot these. Uh, most mornings I go out um, about 5.30 in the morning, I would leave our camp. Um, and I wasn't moving that far from camp to find boils in the morning. And all the footage I have on here of uh, the boils is from the morning. Um, we really only got into them in the morning. Um, we did in the evening as well, so I, I shouldn't say that. I, the only footage is in the morning. I did get into them in the evening, but in the evening I was with, on my ski boat and I had family, kids, nieces, nephews. Um, and so we were out throwing um, some various things, some different plastics, um, just different bass lures at them um, and did pretty well too. Uh, you don't see much during the day, but in the evening we definitely got into them. Um, now the flies I was using, like I said, vary depending on the situation. Um, you know, I mostly used my uh, gurgler, my chartreuse gurgler. I have a video on that. That's a great little topwater fly that's fairly subtle. And I've caught more fish on that, more stripers on that, more bass on that than any other fly I use. But I also try to do topwater more than anything. Um, now to get some of the smallies to hit, I was using a surf candy. Um, surf candy is a lot like a deceiver, but it's got uh, like UV resin like over the entire hook area and then just a tail. Casts a little bit easier than a deceiver does. So I, a lot of times I like to throw that instead of like a deceiver. And that's something that I fish just under the surface. And then actually I caught a ton on the carp mall. Um, I, a bunch of smallmouth, bluegill and carp catfish and stripers all on the cart mall. So I, that fly just catches fish. Um, like I said, I tried to switch it out and go to the, the gurgler whenever I could, but it depended on what I was doing and how I was targeting fish. Um, so, so there's a little bit of all of that in this. Um, so in the mornings, uh, until the sun got on the water, it was a little bit hit or miss. Um, the last morning, and you, you know, right when I got out early, early morning, there was already a boil going on. But some mornings I had to wait an hour or two before a boil would start up. And where the fish seemed to congregate was right along the sun line. And you would see that in the evening as well. Um, so uh, usually that's where we fish when we go and we, we chase stripers on pal. We try to, in the evenings, we'll go out and we kind of cruise around the sun lines. So you get these big canyon walls and they, they put a big shadow on the water. And the stripers tend to kind of follow that a little bit until they start going and then you'll see them all over the place um, in the evening. If, if it gets good, I mean, we had a couple nights where, I mean, you could see uh, there was probably over a thousand fish in various directions that you could see boiling, which, which is crazy and a lot of fun. And like I said, my niece just killed it that one night. Um, in the mornings, I wasn't seeing that. You know, I was seeing smaller boils. You know, I, some of them might have had like 30 or 40 fish in them, which were pretty big. Some had like 10 fish, some had two or three fish. Um, and you know, you try to cruise up on them as fast as you can and get a shot because they don't stay out very long. Um, get into position, uh, if you, if you can, and you can see the direction that the, the stripers are moving, I try to get in front of them a little bit and then lead them just a touch. Um, 
in the canyons where I was fishing, most of where most of this footage is, they were changing their directions a ton. And a lot of that I think was because there was these canyon walls and they just couldn't move around as much. And so the, and, I, and I'm not talking about the stripers. The stripers basically just follow the shad. So it would be the shad that move around. Um, so they would move up and down these walls and then they'd move across these canyons and get to the next wall. And you know, the stripers would go away for five minutes and then you'd see them start again go away for five minutes and start again. And sometimes it was only 10 or 15 seconds that they were on the surface hitting it and you had to get on it and get it to fly on them fast. Um, that can be a big challenge because, you know, my boat goes maybe four or five miles per hour when I'm going as fast as I can. Um, you know, it'd be nicer with something a little bit faster, but you also got to worry about spooking. You know, shag can be spooked pretty easy. So stealth and trying to get a little in front of them if you can lead them a little bit you know I, it's fun but but you end up chasing one and you know you see a boil going you start cruising towards it and then a boil just where you're at pops back up so sometimes i would just sit in spot and kind of wait to see if a boil just disappeared pop back up and maybe it was close enough that i could quickly get a shot on it so, so it was a lot of that too chasing them around uh, none of the fish were real big, um, which I don't ever get into the, the real big ones. I, someone caught a monster down there earlier this year. I think they broke the state record. I can't remember how big it was, but it was huge. So there are some big stripers in Lake Powell. Uh, I've never probably caught anything more than maybe four pounds. Um, you know, you, you'll catch some 24, 25 inchers. They're, they're not going to be super heavy, but you know, four or five pounders. I don't know if I'd, I'd even say five. Um, on the surface but i mean they're still good fish and, and they fight hard and um yeah I, and you can see it's just an absolute riot chasing these things and the water boiling and bubbling and um they're not super particular you can really throw just about anything out there and they'll likely hit it you know i like type top water stuff i did throw a popper for a little bit like a traditional bass popper and they didn't hit it um I don't know. I never had a ton of luck with like your traditional bass poppers because I think I think the bass like it when it's just a little bit under the water, and and that's kind of what a gurgler does. Like the, the whole body of the fly gets underwater, and really just the head stays up, and it kind of pops up each time you pull it. Um, so it's a top water fly, but it it dives just a tiny bit, and I think that's pretty critical. Uh, at least that's my experience with it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. You drive around and you chase these things and, and it's a and it's a lot of fun. Um, let me talk a little bit about Lake Powell overall. Uh, Lake Powell is on the uh, kind of south, southern middle part of Utah. Um, it extends down into Arizona. Um, Glen Canyon and Glen Canyon Dam, which is actually the dam that uh, forms Lake Powell, is actually in Arizona, near Page, Arizona. It's pretty accessible from like Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Salt Lake City. Uh, a lot of people come in from um, Grand Junction, Colorado too. It's, it's kind of central to all of those locations if you, if you want to visit Lake Powell. Um, as far as the fishery goes, it's an incredible striper fishery. Um, there's also really good largemouth, smallmouth, uh, catfish, carp, crappie, bluegill. Um, I think that's it. And there's some pike in there too. but. Um, so the story of the stripers in Lake Powell and Lake Mead is similar. Uh, you know, Lake Powell and Lake Mead are both on the Colorado River. Lake Mead's the largest reservoir in the United States by capacity. Lake Powell is second. Both very large, beautiful. Uh, Lake Mead is more open um, than Lake Powell is. Lake Powell has all these canyons. It, it's it's really. Uh, I mean, I, if you were to come to Utah to visit. You know, we have five national parks and they talk about the big five in Utah and, you know, Zions and, and the different parks. They are, they're awesome. It, for my money, Lake Powell's better. Um, not only do you get to fish for stripers, but, but you get to just drive your boat through the canyons that you basically would go and visit in these other national parks in Utah. Um, it is a, um, it's not a national park, but it is, it is administered by the National Park Service. Uh, Lake Powell. Um, so 1974 is when they actually planted stripers in Lake Powell. Uh, when they originally planted them, now, now Utah um, and, and various states out here in the West use wiper, which are a hybrid between striped bass and white bass, to try to control various populations in different reservoirs that they plant them. 
And really that was the purpose of the stripers um, when they planted stripers back in 1974. They didn't think the stripers could reproduce, so they would grow and they would eat whatever their target fish was at the time. I honestly don't know what that was. Um, and they would be a fun sport fish, but they would die off and they'd have to keep planting them in order to maintain a striped bass population. Um, that didn't happen at all. Uh, the stripers took over the lake completely. Uh, I think the limit right now on stripers is 50 if you wanted to go catch them. I mean, that's they want stripers out of there. Um, they do actually taste pretty good. Uh, you know, we usually eat a couple. I'm not, I'm not keeping 50 and I'm sure as heck not freezing fish. Um, <laughs> but I do like fish, so they're, they are pretty good. Uh, mild, white, flaky meat. They're, they're, they're good to eat. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's kind of how they got in there and where they're at right now. Um, as far as boils go, you can actually go down and hit stripers and lake pout. You know, what's funny is when we got down there basically the very end of June, I think it was the 29th, uh, the water was a lot colder this year than normal. And the first day there was very little boil action. Second day it picked up, third day it picked up, and we stayed six days. By the end, it was amazing. So normally earlier in June, uh, the stripers really pick up and start getting pretty good. They're really good in July and August, September, and even into October sometimes. Um, this year it was a little bit later. Like I said, I don't, I don't know, you know, mid-June, we can usually find them. I, I don't know that you would have found them this year, but um, you know, July, August, September, kind of your, your uh, key months for finding stripers at Lake Powell. Um, and then, like I said earlier, you can get into the large mouth and, and the various things. And we caught, uh, you know, it, I don't know, a hundred catfish um, just off the back of the houseboat. So like with kids and stuff like that, it's just, it's just a fun place to go on top of the, the water sports and stuff like that. It, just a great experience. So uh, I think I've said this before, but if you haven't visited Lake Powell, go check it out. Um, it's a massive lake. There's lots of places to spread out. Go chase some striper boils and uh, check this one off your bucket list. So I'll wrap it up there. There's a few more minutes of cool striper footage. Hope you guys like this one. Uh, I know it's not carp. Uh, love carp. I'll get back to my carp. But uh, I do have a couple cool trips this year that aren't carp that uh, hope to get some cool footage and share with you guys. So thanks for watching and I'll check with you guys later.